from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. It's time for Watch TV last night prior to going to bed? Yeah. All right, clap if you watched the BET Awards. <laughs> clap if you watched Lyrica and A1 and Pop <laughs> Hollywood. Clap if you watched The Connors. <laughs> clap if you watched The Inside of Your Eyelids. <laughs> well, honey. <laughs> <laughs> you are my people. I didn't watch the Connors. I didn't want to know, but I saw, you know, what all was going on. It premiered last night. This is the episode where they had to off Roseanne. They killed her off. Take a look. They think that she must have taken the pills right before bed, and with her health issues, it was enough to stop her breathing. It doesn't make any sense. I got her knees fixed. I flushed all her pills. Oh my God. I found these pills in mom's closet. Well, these aren't even prescribed to her. She got them from Marcy Bellinger. Damn. That's the only thing from mom's closet that I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> well, Viewers were split. 50% of people said that they loved, you know, how, you know, Roseanne was offed, but they're, they're here for the show. And the other 50% said, no, it's not gonna work without Roseanne. Like, ugh, me. I just wanna know, why is Roseanne tweeting about this? I thought you were going to Israel. <laughs> it, isn't that what you told us? You're going to Israel for the whole season, you're not gonna watch the show, and you're gonna stay off Twitter about the show. Well, apparently she's not in Israel. And after the show, she tweeted, I ain't dead, bitches. <laughs> she also said that ABC didn't have, uh, the, her, didn't have to morbidly kill her off in such, a, in such a way for a family show. But I think that ABC did the right thing. Roseanne, you're the one who set yourself up to be a pill popper. You were there when, right? She hurt her back or her knee or whatever. And then you were the one, and, and your character on the show was doctor shopping, getting different doctors from various places. There were pills found all over the house. But last night was a whole cry fest. I mean, Jackie bawled. Jackie bawled. Um, John Goodman bawled. They were all bawling. I didn't want to bawl. I don't care. <laughs> but if you do, don't forget every Tuesday night, the Connors airs. Maybe it'll get more happy, you know, now that we we're done with the elephant in the room, so to speak, maybe it'll get more happy. 
So can you believe that our country is reduced to a president having a Twitter war with a porn star? Oh. Honey, he called her a horse face. Oh. She wasn't a horse face on those nights, was she? <laughs> well, it started yesterday because the Twitter war, um, okay, the president bragged about his legal victory over Stormy Daniels. He tweeted, wait, hold on. Oh God. This is so stupid. I can't believe, I can't believe that this is what we're reduced to. You got a victory, man, and you're still barking up the wrong tree. Ladies and gentlemen, may I please, oh, not this one. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Great. Now I can go after Horseface and her third-rate lawyer in the great state of Texas. She knows nothing about me, a total con. Well, she knows enough about you to know that you're a tiny whiny. <laughs> Within one hour, she clapped back, and here's what she said. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present your president. In addition to his um, shortcomings, he also has demonstrated his incompetence and hatred of women and lack of self-control on Twitter. Again, game on, Tiny. <laughs> I mean, at this point, Stormy's got nothing to lose, you know what I mean? And by the way, She's got to pay, the judge ordered her to pay his legal fees. Exactly. That's a whole lot of twerking that you're going to have to do, Stormy. That's a, that's a lot. Ow. I can't believe he's so mature, though. He called her a horse face. I don't think that she was wrong in calling him tiny. You know, he, he's, the one, he's the one who ha should have a more dignified presence, you know? Well, on another note, um, you know, uh, Donald left Melania in the rain. We, show, we showed you this. We, we showed you this. Right? <clears throat> Just selfish. No, you don't understand. Watch what happens. And when they finally do get, get a piece of the umbrella, oh, you stopped it before. She gets the part that drips down. You, you know when the umbrella, the drip down? But Meghan Markle was happy to hold the umbrella for Harry. Yeah, well, he was doing a press conference or something like that. And she's holding the umbrella for him. Uh-huh. And she's holding the baby for him as well. Wait. What are we talking about? Grog, thank you for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the new Subway series, what's your pick? So there's this makeup artist who says that Cardi B is the worst client ever. Oh. Okay, listen, back in January, there's a makeup artist. <laughs> Her name is Black Swan. I asked Morel, who does my makeup, he's all plugged in. He no, has no idea who this woman is, but also predicted she'll never work again. And I said, well, maybe not with a celebrity, but you know, Texas is a big state. They love to get married. They love to wear a lot of makeup. You can, you can be the makeup artist like for weddings and stuff. Anyway, she spoke about her bad experience working with Cardi. Take a look. She looks at herself in her phone. She's looking in the mirror. She's at the front, she's looking at stuff. She's like, yo, why is so white? And I'm like, it's setting powder. One of the ladies on her team walks in. Yo, take off your This is what she says. Take off your glasses and look at the Look at the shit on my face. It's ugly, yo. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to, do you want me to fix it? You want to make it darker? You want me to make it lighter? You want me to fix it? Do you want me to go? Yeah, you can get the out. Get the out of here. Get the out of here. What gives you the right to talk to me that way? <clears throat> well. Remember, this was back in January, but Cardi just heard about this video because she clapped back this week. Take a look. You come mad late. 
You come mad high, high as f In the middle of the process, I tell, I'm telling you, I don't like how my makeup is looking. Mm -hmm. I'm not finished yet. I right, whatever, you the makeup artist, you acting like you know what you're doing. She was being rude, she was being this, why? Why don't you say why? Why don't you say why? So you need to tell me that you was being an angel and I was just being disrespectful for no reason. It's unprofessional when you go online and talk about it. You know what that do? That make other people not want to hire you. And then people telling me to apologize. Apologize for what? Because she wasn't doing her job right? <clears throat> So, Black Swan responded showing text messages to prove she wasn't late. You know, her arrival time and so on and so forth. She's also strongly denying being on drugs. Here's what I say. I mean, there's nobody to believe one way or the other. Cardi B would be a good get if Black Swan just did her job correctly. You know, every time Cardi goes to Texas then, she'll have her Texas makeup artist and stuff. Personally speaking, I travel with Morel all the time. In 10 years of this show, I might have had to use an outsourced makeup artist in, in another city maybe five times. You know, I'm in Chicago, Morel can't be there, but he always calls and vets the person out, like, who are you? All right, this is what you do, and this is, don't do it better than me, because I still, <laughs> I want my job. Um, but, I don't know. I just, this woman has two kids also. The thing is, is that you shouldn't have posted a video about this because, you know, you could add doing Cardi B to your resume. You don't have to say that it was a good experience or a bad experience, just add that to your resume and that would make people, you know, who come to t Texas want to use you because Cardi B is big. She was great last night on the Hip Hop Awards. I I didn't, um, I didn't watch, but I did see the performance this morning. They played it for me. And um, I've got a Nikki, who? <laughs> I mean, she did a great job. And I like her costume. And her ponytail and stuff. <laughs> anyway, um, so you know she has, she's got this song. It's a, a diss track to Nick, from Nicki Minaj. And so her team is split over whether she should release it or not. Yes. 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 That's what I say, release it. <clears throat> but half of her team is like, no, don't do it. You don't, you don't need to go down that road. And the other half of the team is like, no, hip hop. MC, MCing, DJing, beefing. Hip hop. <laughs> Here's the deal. After 40 years old, when big monumental things happen in your life, don't ask for gifts. Because we're assuming that you already have your blender or your toaster oven or whatever, whatever it is that you got going on in your life. I'm, I'm feeling like after 40, you know, especially because the economy is bad, the times in which we live after 40 years old, people don't need, need to be asking for stuff like a 22 year old would. I'm not getting you a pillow set, a blanket set, no. <laughs> Kenya Moore's baby shower is in just a few days. Now Kenya's 47. And you know that um, her mom doesn't care about her and her father is there sometimes and she's really been looking for real love and she also very much wanted to have a baby. She deserves this, she deserves this. <clears throat> this as in happiness, not this as in a baby shower, 47 years old. Anyway, so she expects every guest to buy her a gift even if they aren't coming, and she wants the RSVP. She's very, very serious about that. She's like etiquette 101. If you cannot attend um, a monumental life-changing event in a friend's life, it's nice to send a gift anyway. I don't know. Excuse me, you're 47. I'm not sending you anything. No. <laughs> Because
because at 47, you know, you're, you're supposed to have like a few things that you're not bothering your friends. And by the way, the registry wasn't real expensive. You know, there were like, you know, $12 bottles and things like that. There were only 73 things on the registry. Uh, people so far as of um, 20 minutes ago, um, <laughs> 20 minutes ago, uh, there were only 12 items purchased so far. And well, I'm gonna give you a tip and a hint, right? If by chance you are pushed in a corner and you have to buy a gift for somebody for one of these monumental occasions, don't buy the actual gift. What you do, no, not a gift card either. <laughs> what you do is you make a donation like to the American Cancer Society or something like that. And, and look, listen, listen, li you don't hear. And you say, because you know, they give you the cards, they say, you know, a donation was made in your name. They don't have to know it was only $20 or $10 or whatever you gave. I'm just saying. Good luck, Kenya. And the baby. And the husband. Allegedly. I play. So, um, speaking of babies, so Piers Morgan is being dragged and mocked for um, mocking men and how they carry their babies. Now, I find nothing wrong with a baby Bjorn. James Bond star Daniel Craig was spotted carrying his daughter in the baby Bjorn. And, <clears throat> and then Piers, Piers uh, tweets, oh, 007, no, not you as well. It, hashtag emasculated bond. Well, dads all over came out showing their pictures in force, showing them carrying. The, the, yeah, yeah. I find nothing wrong with that at all. You know, with a man carrying the baby in the front like that. Even Captain America, Chris Evans, jumped in saying, you really have to be so uncertain of your own masculinity to consider yourself <laughs> with how other men carry his child. I'll tell you what though, I never had one of those baby things, you know, that, that front strap, because I was always scared that the strap would break and then he'd fall <laughs> down and, you know. But um, when I was working here in the city at Park and at 34th, and the parking garage was right across the street. And when Kev would come to work with me, because at that point, you know, he's a goober, you know, and so I'd bring him to work sometimes. We had two high chairs, one for the house and one for the car. And I'd put him in that high chair with the tray <laughs> and the four wheels, throw those Cheerios on top, push him across the street in the high chair, in the high chair. <laughs> come on. Mommy's gotta work, mommy's gotta work. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. He's happy, he's got his toys, you know, in his, his, on the side, and the Cheerios at the, at the top. And then when we get to the radio station, I just push him right in and park him right next to my chair and do the show. I felt like a stroller was too much, you know? A stroller was too much, they're all low. And then when you're on the radio, you sit in a higher chair. So then I'd have to be down here like this if he was in a stroller. Now he's like right here. He can, we can make eye contact. You see, what, uh, can I have a, a cheerio? Perfect. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I find nothing uh, gay about it. If that's what you're insinuating. Um, so Lady Gaga is engaged to her agent, Christian Carino. And I, I always thought she was engaged anyway or married or something like that. I just, I, it's, it's hard to keep up with her. But they've dated for a year and a half. Now he's 49 and a divorcee. He was married for 18 years and he's got two children. And she's only 32, but she's got an older... I didn't say face. She's got an older soul. So, you know, to me, her being with somebody her own age almost doesn't even make sense. You know, she's gotta be with an older man, a seasoned man who knows things, 
wisdom. But he's also her agent. So is it good to be married to her agent when they finally get married? Well, only if he fires his other clients and makes me priority. You know, I'm priority number one. I'm your agent. I'm Gaga. Let's get this money, you know, and you can travel. We can travel together and so on and so forth. No other clients, just me. That's it. So, he apparently uh, was so in love with her even before we found out all this information that um, he got a tattoo of her on his arm, which doesn't look like her. Uh uh, money back. Wait, here it comes. <laughs> Who was that? Anyway, you know, at, at, one, at one point, um, Gaga was previously engaged to that hot actor, uh, Taylor Kinney. He's 37. And they dated for four years before they became engaged on Valentine's Day in 2015. Then they broke up in 2016. And so now she's with uh, this guy, uh, Christian. So the rings, let's size them up. Um, $400,000 for a pink sapphire ring with diamond halo all around. That's not a pink diamond, the diamond halo. It's very beautiful. I don't know, there's something about playing with the colors of stones and stuff that is reserved for other fingers. I'm a diamond girl. Clear, 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 clear. A sapphire is nice over here maybe, or over here, but not here. So Taylor, um, this is the ring that, that um, Christian got her, but here's the first ring that she got when she was engaged to Taylor. Yeah, and both rings were about $400,000. It's a six carat heart shaped ring. And you know, I don't like the shapes and stuff. I mean, that, that's fine for you maybe, but I don't, you know, a heart shaped ring, okay, get it for me for this hand, <laughs> but not this hand. I'm more of a traditionalist, you know, I, just like a splash of diamonds and that's it. But congrats, oh, and remember when Jennifer Lopez um, got engaged to Ben Affleck? He went out and spent $2.5 million on a pink diamond. And when she got it, I was like, ew, a pink diamond. <laughs> like, like, if you're married, then that's the most important finger on your hand for a lot of us. You gotta be stuck with a pink diamond for the rest of your life? No, a pink diamond belongs someplace else, but not, anyway, good luck to everybody involved. <laughs> And we've got more great show, everyone. CNN's Van Jones is on the couch. So grab a seat.